Hey, everybody. Welcome back to episode 15. I have brought back my good friend, JC. Um, We had such a fun conversation last time, and he had a few more questions for me, so I thought we'd just welcome him right back on to the show. Jeremy, thanks again for being here, and welcome. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, great to talk to you and pick your brain and find out all the great marketing secrets. Um, one question I, I had I didn't get to ask you last time, uh, obviously you're a female entrepreneur. Um, how do you think being a female specifically has made things different for you? Um, do you think people take you less seriously? Do you think you, know, you have different challenges? Has there been things that have been easier for you? I don't think that anybody has ever outwardly treated me differently, but I and I and I have never pinpointed if this is because I'm a female or because like I didn't come from a huge fancy agency. I don't have this former CEO, you know, marketing director title at a big fancy company, um, well known. Um, I wasn't you know, in charge of an entire marketing department. And so I feel like when I do get, when my ideas kind of get ousted or say I I warn a client like, hey, this is probably a really bad idea. This this actually Mm -hmm. happened not very long ago. I said, this strategy that you're using for email marketing is not a good idea. It's probably going to get you blocked from your account. But um, Mm -hmm. another guy you know, he was a male. And like I said, I don't know if it's a male versus an experienced past title thing, but um, he was a male with a, you know, big, long resume, older gentleman, longer experience um, in sales, not necessarily in marketing, but in sales than I. And he wanted to do it that particular way. And so um, I kind of lost that battle and we did it his way and we got blocked from our account so um so it was kind of like i'm sitting there saying i told you so why didn't you listen to me i'm the marketing expert i know what i'm talking about and you know so whether a situation like that or not happened because the guy was male and i was female or that person had um more trust with the business owner who came who made the final decision than then, you know, the business owner had more trust in him than he had more trust in me or a different type of relationship with him than me. Like, I can't really pinpoint, I can't, I won't say that it was specifically just because I'm female that my ideas didn't get, you know, listened to and my advice didn't get taken. Um, So for me, I can say that my experience in working with men and women and being treated as an equal and being respected has all been very positive. Well, that's good. Um, you, you know, people always have issues in the workplace and, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. When I worked in a marketing department and had a nine-to-five job, I was it was miserable. Like, but it was all really? like a female female ran marketing department and my boss was female and you know we just mm-hmm. I mean she was just she was awful <laughs> oh, no. but I also think that but I also think that sometimes females are a little more feisty with other females so um, okay. so so yeah so maybe because yeah and, and you know my clients are a lot uh, female owned businesses as well so some mm-hmm. of the clients that I've had the longest are also ran by females. So they, in turn, might, you know, have more of a respect for me or feel more comfortable with me because I'm female also. I can't say that right. again for a fact, but, yeah, and, and maybe because I'm female, I, I draw, I attract female <laughs> clients like that okay. could be too. Yeah. That's interesting. Um Let's talk more about uh, being an entrepreneur. A lot of businesses uh, take advantage of utilizing internships and are able to kind of bring people in that are just starting out their careers or, you know, some of them are even part-time students um, as a way to sort of, you know, get get people trained and ultimately lead to a full-time employment or in you know, just to bring them on to help get some stuff done that they need. 
uh, in the short term. Uh, what do you think about uh, people using internships as a way to get their business up and running? Yeah, so I think if you offer an internship, it should be in an area that you're an absolute expert in. I don't think you should hire somebody for cheap labor, quote unquote, um, to, to run an area of your business that you're uncertain about because the point of the internship is for that person to learn from somebody and for you to mentor that person. And mm -hmm. so I feel like your business is going to benefit and the intern is going to benefit if you truly are taking the time to work with them and to mold them and to teach them the ins and outs of the industry and the company and, you know, all aspects of, of running a business versus if you just say, well, I need, you know, I'll just hire a student because it'll be cheaper or quicker right. or easier. Um, I don't necessarily think that that's a good strategy or that those are good reasons for hiring an intern. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I mean, they, they, they could tell right away, I think, coming into an organization if they're going to get something out of it or if they're just going to, you know, be delivering coffee to the rest of the staff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which for sure. is not that great of a learning experience for somebody. Right. Um, give it, then, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Sorry. How about it's okay, we could cut this out. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> this is gonna be off all kinds of fun. I know edit. it's so awful. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave this part in though for sure. Yeah, this awful part, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this I'll is how it stuff like really works clip. in the real world. <laughs> I'll use you it try to have a business like meeting and be yeah. talking over each other. No, 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 really. No, you first. No, no, yeah. you. No, you. No. I'm <laughs> See, that's the problem when you're out of too polite. Ass. Well, yeah, and I literally feel like I'm talking out of my ass and can't formulate a sentence. <laughs> oh, no. That's what happens when Jill wakes up at 4.30. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. So tell us what advice you would have for somebody who's just starting a brand new business. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a fine line between taking your sweet time because you want everything to be absolutely perfect and totally rushing through decision making and just, you know, throwing up any old logo on any old type of website and not really thinking it through and, and being strategic. So I've kind of seen um, the full gamut of people who start businesses and, and they, you know, they're, they're either very hesitant to get it up and running and they second guess themselves a lot and every decision is like the weight of the world, you know. Right. Um, so you have to have that kind of discernment to know, okay, is this a decision that's really going to, you know, impact me down the road? If not, just make a decision. Um, and if it is something that really has a long-term effect on my business, then, you know, how, how am I going to approach this situation and, and problem solve and think around it and choose what's best? Um, so, so yeah, I, like I said, I've kind of seen both. I've seen people just, like, not think things through, and then, you know, they get six months to a year in, and sales could be better, and things could be better, but you know, because they could be better and they've already spent some money, then they're reluctant to redo anything because then they've got to spend even more money. Um, right. So just being smart and, and law, you know, thinking about things, being forward thinking. You know, even something, uh, this is a good example. I have a project that I'm doing right now that is all I'm doing is, well, all my role is, um, is to write the copy on a website. And mm -hmm. the clients needed headshots and so they reached out to both the graphic designer and I and asked if we knew anybody and so we gave our recommendations but in that I also said you might want to consider um, someone who can do commercial photography in the event that down the road you want to take out a billboard or you want to do some type of advertising and you want mm -hmm. or even on your website you don't want stock images you want um, right. you know per personal images so so just trying to be like forward thinking like that um, from mm -hmm. the beginning when you're just building your website 
don't just stop at headshots think down the road. You're going to need images for social media content. You're going, to, you're going to, like I said, if you choose to advertise, you're likely going to need images for that. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's, man, I mean, this, the answer to this question, <laughs> I feel like, could be, could be so long. But if, right. if you're forward thinking and you have a good balance between making decisions, making decisions and moving on and also making smart, careful decisions, wise decisions, where best to spend your money. And again, that's mm. why I love getting in on the ground floor with people because it's, I can help them from go make the best decisions to allocate their money wisely so they get the best return on their investment so that we don't have to go back six months, a year, 10 years into it mm. and be like, oh, yeah, we should have done that differently. <laughs> and I right. out in 2020, but, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, everybody makes mistakes, but hopefully you learn from those. And, you know, if you plan things out, you can avoid, you know, the, the more expensive mistakes. Yeah, for sure. It definitely comes down to research. You know, if you always kind of fall back to your research and you have a good grip on who your target market is and where they are and, you know, what social media platforms they're on, then it kind of tells you, okay, this is where I mm-hmm. should be targeting. This is This is where I should spend my money. This is a smart move. Um, right. Yeah. So uh, along those lines, when you're trying to figure out the target market and how to approach a marketing campaign for a new business, how does it differ when you're dealing with a business that's a business-to-business, B2B company versus a company that's marketing directly to consumers? How would that be different? Yeah. Yeah. Um... So again, nothing of the of the overall process changes. You still have research, whether you're researching uh, um, other businesses or researching a consumer, and you mm-hmm. still have um, so you still have the research. You still want to have a clear objective and goal as to what it is you want to accomplish through your marketing, and then you still have that strategy of how you're going to accomplish that, and then you have your creativity, and you're always. Um, designing your creative in a way that it resonates with your target. So whether your target, again, is a business or a consumer, you just want to make sure that demographically and psychographically your ads speak to them. I think, Mm -hmm. and this might be a little bit more of a personal opinion than a a strong (laughs) um, uh, business opinion, but like, um, or from experience, but I think that marketing B2B is so much harder, especially like for me, I'm trying to catch that small business owner that's already doing so many things and they're barely on social media. They're not sitting down and Googling, you know, marketing ideas. (laughs) Like, like they're, Mm -hmm. they're, they're wearing so many hats for their business already and they're just kind of like in this zone where day in and day out they do what they can to keep the business afloat. So I feel right. like in order for me to cut through all that clutter and all that noise, it's like if I'm marketing to a consumer, yeah, I'm up against everybody else who's marketing to that consumer. But when I'm marketing mm-hmm. to a business, I'm up against all the marketing and all the day-to-day stuff that that consumer faces, but now if that consumer is a business owner, they're also distracted by this business that they're running. So it's like right. they've got so this busy. kind of, yeah, I mean, so busy. <laughs> um, mm. so, so I do think that B2B is more challenging, um, mm-hmm. and that could just vary between industries, but you know, I, I also think I also just think that people who have outsourced to marketing um, haven't had good experiences, and that's why they're kind of hesitant to do it again. But again, that might be a little bit more of my personal versus my professional opinion coming through there. <laughs> that's all right. It's, that's one and the same. It's all <laughs> Joe, right? <laughs> True. So, um, I, speaking again about entrepreneurs. Uh, do you think it's important to have a degree to be successful? I know you have a master's degree in marketing, um, but if you had to do it again, would you get your degree? And do you think it's necessary for a, an entrepreneur to go to college and get their degree? 
Yeah, it's funny because, like, my husband and I right now are trying to figure out, like, what we're going to do to set our daughter up um, for the future, for her finances, for help with college. And, you know, I'm as somebody who has a lot of You're way ahead of the game then, huh? (laughs) Yeah, she's two. She's how old now? uh, Yeah, she's two. (laughs) Oh, wow. Um, You you don't have that stuff figured out yet? You should have done that a year ago. Come on. Lacking. <laughs> um, a lot of parents do it, yeah, even before the child is born. So, um, so For yeah, real? In, 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 yeah, in, in some ways, parents out there are probably like, "Wow, Jill, she's two. Get on it." But yeah, uh. um, so there's been a lot of discussion in our household because uh, my husband doesn't have a college degree. Some of the most successful people I know do not have college degrees, uh, and mm-hmm. so, so. For me personally, the degree was 100% necessary. I got my undergrad in liberal arts, which I call my degree in nothing, because all I had to do was take a certain number of um, credit hours at the 300 level course, and and I graduated. Mm -hmm. So I had classes, you know, I had yoga in college. I had film classes up the wazoo. Um, I took like almost every film class just because they found them really interesting and um, Mm -hmm. I, I, I did like how film and business and film and philosophy and film and psychology, it, it, like I always found a way that they intersected. And so yeah. it, was, it, was, it was an interesting time, but I don't know how much it was necessarily preparing me for any one particular career. So I graduated mm. with my undergrad um, degree and I was working in a physical therapy office and the office was going through a rebrand. It was like a franchise and they were going through a rebrand, and my boss at the time was like, oh, I have this marketing meeting, and I said, can I come? And he's like, sure. So I went, mm-hmm. and it was just like the light bulb went on. I'm like, this mm-hmm. is what I want to do. I love this branding. I want to be the person on the other side of the table coming up with the, the ideas and the logos and the colors and communicating to the client um, the advantages and the disadvantages. And so I started looking at jobs, and all the jobs mm-hmm. were required a marketing degree. So I said, well, I'll oh. go get a marketing degree. <laughs> and, yeah, um, yeah so, so instead of going back for a four-year, I wasn't going to do that. It just seemed easier uh-huh. to get a master's. So I, um, so I got my master's. And, and you know, it was nice. like, on one hand, it was like everybody was so far ahead of me because they were all PR major or PR minors in undergrad and majors and marketing majors and business majors, and I, you know, have my degree in nothing. And <laughs> so, um, so on one hand, I. But you knew of, all the good I, movies. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> You're right about that. Um, so on mm. one hand, I was like, I felt like I had a lot of catching up to do, but. I don't know, on the other hand, I'm like, how did this guy get into college or how did that girl get into this school? You know, how are we taking the same classes and getting the same degree? Like, you can't show up to mm. class on time because, you, you know, but you got a coffee in your hand. <laughs> it's like, right. you had to stop and get that coffee, which probably made you late, but little, mm. little complaints like that. But I feel like when I was in the nine to five now, like it's no secret that I cannot stand big business, okay? Um, but when mm. I was in like the nine to five, I... And my gal pal Natalie and I talk about this a lot, like some of the people we know in big, big roles, big marketing jobs, lots of responsibility. They're dealing with big budgets. They're, they're, we scratch our heads and we're just like, how does that person have that job? They won't even respond to an email in a timely manner or they, you know, they made this decision or look at, you know, look at this ad they ran. It's atrocious looking, you know, it (laughs) violates the basics of advertising, you know, 101 here. So, so I don't know. It's interesting to me how people climb the ranks and how people get afforded different opportunities because I, like I said, I graduated from uh, grad school and started applying mm-hmm. to jobs, and I had a little bit, little bit of a hard time um, getting hired at my first job. It just like I remember it taking a while, but then when I wanted to leave that job, I thought, well, I've got a year experience. Um, I've got all sorts of different experience. I was doing trade shows. I had done an international marketing campaign for them. I mm-hmm. had um, email. I had learned email marketing by that time. So I had a lot of different, you know, a, a lot of experience and promotions. And so I had, I felt like I had a really good base. But at that time when I was looking for jobs, 
I'm not kidding you, Jeremy. I probably applied to two or 300 jobs and so much as didn't even wow. get a call back. Yeah. Jeez. So Was this because of the economy at the time? I think it was partly because of the economy, but mm. and because of the economy, people were really looking to kill like two birds with one stone. So they wanted people that were marketers but could also be graphic designers or graphic designers that could also be marketers. And mm. way back when I was in school, we, we did, marketing didn't focus on design, um, mm. you know, and, and no advisor ever said to me, like, oh, it might be great if you took this design class. That would, design was not part of the graduate master's program curriculum because I didn't know mm. what I wanted to do when I was an undergrad. It didn't occur to me to take a design <laughs> class. Um, mm. so, so, yeah, so it was like, Nowadays, I think kids come out of high school with more Photoshop skills than I have, literally. Um, mm. and, and so it's a little bit of a different game because kids are just a little bit more tech savvy and a little bit they know these programs. And um, so I think it's that. And I definitely think where you go to school matters in some industries. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, you're in the city of Chicago and you're up against people with degrees from – probably even Ivy League, but also University of Chicago and some of the, you know, DePaul, very good school, um, Loyola, Mm -hmm. you know, very respected school. And I think those Mm -hmm. schools jump off, jump off the resumes a little bit more. And so those are Mm -hmm. the people that probably get kind of pushed to the top. Um, So so that, you know, again, these are my experiences. This is me from the outside looking in. Um, But basically, I built Vera Creative out of a, a lack. You know, the quote, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. Well, I basically mm-hmm. built a door, and that door was called Vera yeah. Creative because I wanted out of my nine to five, and um, the opportunity wasn't presenting itself, so I just started my own thing. <laughs> nice. And now you're also uh, teaching other students uh, Correct. Well, you're not a student anymore, but <laughs> you're teaching marketing. Tell us about that. Uh, what's your favorite thing about teaching? Favorite thing about teaching? I guess, like, I, I think my students probably think I'm crazy. Um, I feel like I bring a lot of enthusiasm because, again, clearly I love what I do. Um, mm-hmm. And so my favorite thing about teaching is, is kind of watching my enthusiasm maybe rub off on other students. Um, I've yep. had students that say, I had one student that donated to the class gift in my honor. I had a student who um, said, thanks to you, I'm going to go pursue a master's. I've had students that keep in touch and ask for resume help and just um, help with starting their own businesses. So in that sense, that's kind of my my favorite thing about teaching, I would say. Yeah, meeting all the interesting people that go through. Yeah, and well, and it's kind of the same thing. Like you get the you get the full the full spectrum of individuals of people that you just know are going to be successful. Like you can really just see it. Their work ethic is there. They care very mm-hmm. deeply about their grades. They take the feedback and they kind of run with it. And then you get the students that are probably like there to get that degree and get out. Um, mm-hmm. So you do you meet a lot of really. It, and the other thing is is that my course is part of the art department so I get a lot of art majors so that's interesting for me because like I said I don't have that art background now I've picked it up over the years and like I understand best practices of design and you know we talked about the last time like even with just a website you know Mm -hmm. keeping up to date on you know what's what's the best readability in terms of color and and, you know some kind of like self-taught in that sense just based off of common sense and research and and, mm-hmm. and that type of thing, but it's great to it's great it, it's great to work with the art students because they really have a, a creative mind and they're not business minded. And the whole kind of point of my class is to show them the business side of the art world, um, and mm-hmm. whether they take that and they end up as a graphic designer at an ad agency. Now they've had a little bit of experience and they can understand, you know, what goes into the marketing end of that ad 
or mm-hmm. whether they become artists and need to market themselves, they now know how to utilize marketing to help grow their you know, business as an artist, whether it's studio you know, art or they become, yeah, like an art teacher or like whatever. So. Uh-huh. And do you feel like you learn from your students? Yeah, um, but like definitely they, they're creative and so they're fun to be around in that sense. Um, so the way that the class is structured is we have business majors as well and we have marketing majors and then we have our art majors. And so I take them and I kind of teach them all of the components of an integrated campaign uh, for advertising because mm-hmm. it's an advertising course. And once we've learned all the, you know, smaller pieces to an advertising campaign, we put it together for sometimes it's my client, sometimes it's a client that I source um, and bring in. So they actually have an opportunity to work on a real brand. So we're working oh, nice. with somebody's, yeah, so we're working with somebody's actual business. They get to meet the business owner. I don't give any exams. I actually just grade assignments and then their final presentation is well, used to be face-to-face. I'm doing an online course this semester, but mm-hmm. um, it's, they'll still have to present via Zoom to the client mm-hmm. their integrated advertising campaign, and it's like a 30- to 40-minute presentation. Like, it's a big yeah. deal. And, and it's a real-world example. I think that makes it more interesting than, you know, some fabricated, uh, sure. made-up widget that they're trying to sell, and, you know, right. you have to invent well, like the I said, customer. Yeah, like I said, it jumps off the resume more when you've got a real brand that you worked on versus this, well, I did this made-up project once. You know, like one mm-hmm. of the first projects we ever did in grad school, we had to made up, make up a product that didn't exist. It was like, okay. okay, it was just so hard for us. I don't know why, but maybe because it was my first project and I, I hadn't tapped into my creative brain at that point in time yet. But, um, but mm-hmm. yeah, so... But they also, in their, within their groups, some are art majors, some are business majors, and they get to learn from each other. And oh, right, because they're working yeah. together on stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, there, there are some ideas that just really, really wow me. Um, I think in the spring, I think I taught spring of 2019 prior to fall of 2020, and spring of 2019, I had a group that was just, I mean, they were phenomenal. Uh, I think some of them ended up having internships with, well, I know some of them ended up having internships with the company that um, we did the campaign for. So that was really great for them. But, yeah, they were doing, like, they were doing this, like, 3D, like, um, (laughs) reality-altering I mean, it was just wow. like, it was so, so cool. Um, one of the girls, so they did this like, uh, it's called Zapper. It's like an app that you download. And mm-hmm. if you scan a QR code, this like, this, if you, if you scan a Q, this QR code that other people like used, it basically is augmented reality. So what they did is they okay. took a table tent. So there's like a little, you know, like a little, piece of paper that's like folded into three or four sides right and it makes like a tent on a table it's like something you'd see at a restaurant very common like a three-sided little thing where it's got like the pancakes on one side and then the you know right right. it has their little promotions of different things they have going on Yes, so they used this augmented reality app, and when you scanned the Table Tents QR code, this basically like commercial, it comes up on your phone, but it plays in front of your phone's camera. So whatever your phone is pointed at, be it the table, you've got animation like right in front of you. But they like went a step further, and one of the girl's boyfriends was like in a band, or and he was a musician, and so they they like they recorded their own music for this ad. It's <laughs> just like nice. I'm probably I'm probably not even doing it justice because I'm like an old fart, but like <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> augmented reality. But it was just the, the level of creativity, and then and then the the commitment that they had mm-hmm. to the project was just so awesome to see. Um, and when it comes to that type of new technology, I mean, I'm, I really am learning from them. And 
I my assistant yeah. now is a former student of mine, and okay. that, you know she's she's handling my Snapchat stuff because, like I said, right. like I haven't had time to learn that type of stuff yet. And she's of that demographic, she's of that age, and she gets it, and she can do it, and she's got the skill, and I don't. So, mm-hmm. absolutely, um, you know, learn from students, and then. I'll give you one more example, which is uh, pretty exciting. I have been trying since I came up with my podcast. It bothered me that it wasn't integrated with my brand. So Vera Creative is my marketing firm name. Vera means warrior in Sanskrit. Obviously, you know where the creative part comes from. And so the whole kind of concept behind my brand name is, you know, I'm, I'm a creative warrior. I'm a creative champion for your brand, um, victory for brands. You know, you want to have a winning brand. It's kind of got this, uh, you know, not, not necessarily fairy tale, but kind of like a, a knight in armor type of feel. And mm-hmm. the batter Although I like the I like the concept of um, ingredients to success and recipes for disaster and how brands and entrepreneurs rise, like obviously those are all mm-hmm. baking references and it works together. But the colors mm-hmm. and the concept and the name had nothing to do with Vera Creative. And right. you know, I said in episode fourteen, sometimes a business owner is just too close to their business to like see its flaws or to to mm-hmm. be like fully creative with it. And so I have sat down a number of times trying, you know, just staring at my logo and thinking about my tagline and thinking about how do I work this into the podcast name and the title and how do I make it click for people that I'm actually a marketing consultant and that's the, you know, the deeper (laughs) conversation behind um, my interviews. And I, I just couldn't, I couldn't get to it. And so this past mm. week in class, um, I taught my students all about creative briefs. Creative briefs are a document that basically outline a project, and they, you know, they give you all the background and all the technical specs that you need to complete a project. And so I put one of my groups up to the task of rebranding my podcast, totally expecting that because I'm so picky and I know my mm-hmm. business best, <laughs> right, <laughs> that um, – that they probably wouldn't give me something that I would use, but I was curious to see what they would come up with. They mm-hmm. knocked it out of the park. I mean, really? I was like jumping out of my skin last night. I couldn't sleep. I was, uh, yeah. I mean, they just, they, they renamed it and they gave it a great tagline. We're still kind of going to tweak and play with the artwork a little bit. It is so well integrated with my brand. It's just genius. It's, and it's me, like it feels more like me, um, which is like me personally, so that's super mm-hmm. cool. So I'm just like, I'm super jazzed about this. I'm super excited to roll out the new name um, soon when we have the artwork finalized. But, yeah, I mean, I had low unfor- – I should have had high expectations, but I had a little bit lower expectations, going to be honest here, because, mm-hmm. again, you know, I'm thinking I've been the business owner for 10 years. So, you know, I should be able to come up with this. I'm the creative <laughs> mind. But, but you're just you maybe know, now sometimes. you know what your clients are thinking. <laughs> yeah, oh God, totally. like who is this Jill girl? She's not going to be able to figure this out. No like, way. I can figure it out. This female <laughs> business owner, right? <laughs> yeah, what does she know? She's just a girl, yeah. anyway. Yeah, she's just a girl. Oh, um, maybe I should call mm-hmm. my podcast that. Just a girl. <laughs> just a girl. Um, just a girl. Yeah. So, so, anyways, like that. You know, did I learn anything from them? Well, I guess I learned not to doubt my students, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, it, it just, I don't know. It, I can't tell you how much it bothered me that, that when I can't take my own advice and my advice to clients is always integrate, integrate, integrate. Everything has to be branded. Everything has to be consistent. And so the fact that this wasn't necessarily consistent just – drove me bonkers but now it's going to be and it's like a big weight lifted off my chest and I'm super excited about it and I just think that people are gonna I think people will connect with it a lot better that's great so uh obviously your students are younger does it help uh getting to know the next generation and have an idea of you know their mindset and help you with your marketing as well 
I mean, uh, yeah, this is hard because, again, I'm old and cynical and, you know. (laughs) You're not that old, come on. (laughs) Well, you know, in in the mentality of, like, okay, like, if you ask them, like, you know, well, why don't you follow this brand on Instagram? Oh, well, they don't have a lot of followers. They must not be popular. Okay, we're all back in high school again. You're not popular, (laughs) so I'm not going to like you. But but that's Mm. true. Like, that is the mentality of people these days. And... You know, to that I say, well, if not you, who? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like the brand has to start somewhere, right? Like if you right. don't like it, then how are other people supposed to know that it's good? So just be authentic. And mm-hmm. and I think I kind of I mentioned this in my after the episode blog of of episode fourteen, where it was like, if if you want to like something, just go ahead and like it. Don't be afraid of what your friends are going to say because you like an Instagram or a Facebook page that they don't haven't heard about yet. Maybe you'll be the mm-hmm. trendsetter, and maybe you know everyone will then start following suit, and that page will get a lot of likes, and you'll change a small business owner's life. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I know that's like kind of a lofty um, example, right? But uh, of how mm-hmm. social media can work. But but yeah, it is it is interesting. Um, to be able to see, I'll say this, it's interesting to get into the mindset of a younger person, but it's not always pleasant. It's sometimes very frustrating. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Like, you know, it's just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just right. a different generation. You know, your, your expectations of, of, of how, you know, things should come to you or how easy things should be are just totally different. And, you know, Mm -hmm. like, you know, imagine growing up when like when the internet was first being introduced, we had to go research things out of books and card catalogs and it's just different, right? It's a different Um, world. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So um, what other uh, lessons have you learned as an entrepreneur uh, from mistakes that you've made? Yeah, lessons. I, You know, I think for me, well, I don't know if I've learned this lesson yet. So I think, but I think what has been hardest for me is the money aspect is kind of charging what I'm worth without batting an eye. You know, and, and I always want to help people and I always want to, I, I feel bad for people and I'm always like, okay, you know, I know that I can help you. So I'll just mm-hmm. take this, you know, little bit of money that you can afford to pay me, but I know that I'm, you know, much more valuable. Um, so, so that for me has really just been, it's been the hardest part, um, is and I have clients who who will gladly pay the price because they understand it and they get it and and they see the value right away but making Mm. people see that value and this is like again going back to the last episode when we were talking about that initial interview with a client and it's really me listening to see if they understand the value because if Mm. they don't understand the value they're not going to pay the price and I'm and I and I think I'm you know, totally affordable, right? Um, mm. I do not think that my services are are outlandish at all, but I also think that there's just a gap between what business owners think things should cost and what they actually cost, <laughs> mm. you know? I mean, if you quote somebody three grand for a website, you and I both know that's not a lot of money um, right. for a website. So, but right. I don't think a lot of business owners, and especially entrepreneurs, people who are just starting out, they they probably didn't do the research on how much marketing is going to cost. They don't know that, they, you know, I think a small business, which is what, it, making under $10 million or less or some, something, it's still a very large number. They say that mm-hmm. you should allocate 5 to 7% of your, um, of your revenue, revenue for your marketing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a chunk of change, right? Um, mm-hmm. And, of course, you have to pay me and then you have to pay – whatever advertising and marketing efforts you do on top of that, right? Mm. Um, so that can, that can kind of give people stick or shock, I think, um, if they're just <laughs> not, if they haven't done any research and, and, the, and they don't know. But then I think if they did some research and priced out some other people, then they might be like, oh, wow, that's really fair. But again, right. 
then if you it's all that pricing strategy well if you're the cheapest and there you get what you pay for do you do they you think that you're crap <laughs> you know, right you, crap. you don't want people because, not to think that you're getting right. giving them much value if they're not charging much right exactly so so yeah you know and, and like even just comes down to I was just giving an example last night to my students while I was teaching them because one of the creative briefs there um, the project was to come up with a t-shirt design and so they asked for the business logo so I sent them the logo in full color the logo in all white the logo in all black and then I sent them the little favicon favicon I don't know what we're calling mm-hmm. it these days but the little <laughs> icon that like the, the yeah. you know the favicon smaller bird favicon yeah for people who don't know out there, and this is a gripe of mine too, is when somebody tries to fit their entire logo inside a social media yeah. profile picture, and then the letters and the words get shrunk down to the point of oh, like no. non-existent. So the favicon, mm. that's what that's for, people. It also yeah, comes up. It's so um, small. Yeah, yeah. So you can so fit like one important. letter if you're lucky. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I sent you try to write a word. Just forget about it. I oh no, it's like it's not even possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I sent them all the versions of the logo, and I said to them because many of them are again are graphic designers. I'm like, if you ever design a logo for a client, again, be forward thinking. There might be times where you need to put your colored logo on an all black background, and you might need mm-hmm. a completely what you know reversed out version of it, all white version. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So I, you know. So many times I work with a business owner that I don't know how much they paid to have a logo, but they have like one and only one file of their logo Mm -hmm. and they don't have the original file and you can't resize it without it getting blurry and it's a JPEG, it's not on a clear background, so you can't put it on anything because you always have Mm -hmm. that white box around it. (laughs) So small things like that where when I do have that initial conversation with the client, I, I have learned to educate them on the value that I provide. Listen, if I design your logo, you are going to get so many file types. You're going to get, you know, I'm going to tell you what font colors or what font we used. I'm going to tell you what colors we used because that's all stuff that you're going to want to make sure that you have all that information right. handy for whoever does do your marketing or if they do their marketing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's just frustrating, like I said, when people come after the fact and, they, you know, they've got, like, one file <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. just not workable. Um, it limits right. so much what we can do. Yeah, and you were talking so, yeah, last I time think... about how much harder it is to come into a situation where there's already been someone working on it and, you know, maybe they had certain fonts or color or whatever, and you've got to try to match that, which is just one extra difficulty. Right, and I think, like, I, I think, again, in terms of lessons that I've learned, it's like I've, I've also learned to be forward-thinking, and I've also learned to be like, okay, well, <laughs> um, you know, like I said in that initial interview, like, I know what to say now. I know how to prep things. I know my rebuttals. You know, if I get, mm-hmm. like, a yeah, but. Um, so, mm-hmm. so, yeah, like, a lot of it is just, maybe communication, we could sum it up to communication um, Mm -hmm. and how how to talk with clients and just I have learned what other people aren't delivering and I've made sure that I deliver on those things because that, I feel, is what's going to set me apart. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I think uh, you've given a lot of really helpful information for anybody that uh, wants to start a business or is an entrepreneur already. Yes, that's the goal. And that's the goal of the podcast. And so I hope to just um, keep interviewing guests and keep having people on the show that can share their insight and their knowledge and, um, you know, a little bit maybe of their um, their victories and, and their battle scars if we're moving from ingredients to success and recipes for disaster. Right. <laughs> um, we, can, we can call them victories and battle scars. But, um, but yeah, so go. I hope to just, yeah, I hope to just, uh, just to keep helping people and keep, like, 
getting at least if it's if you didn't get a clear answer you've got like uh something to think about right something to chew on something to consider um i feel like if i've done that then um i've accomplished what i've set out to do yeah and uh, people can always reach out to you directly and i'm sure you'll have plenty of more detailed information about any of the things we've talked about yes so I have a lot of work samples and um, some information as to those three areas where I think that, you know, my company really sets itself apart in terms of strategy and um, research and strategy and creativity. So, like, you can learn more about that on my website. And, of course, I'm on Facebook at Vera Creative. I'm on Instagram at Vera Creative. And like and share and follow and download this podcast. I don't think people understand how important it is for a podcast to have downloads, but it's super mm-hmm. important and comments and likes and shares. So um, if you like the content, please just share it. Don't think because somebody else hasn't shared it, it means it's not good or popular. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, yeah. So thank you, Jeremy. Thanks again for coming on and, and just Absolutely. Um, and letting me letting me voice my opinions for a change. Yes. A lot of times I, yeah, a lot of times I, I I throw in a little bit, but I try to let my guests do the majority of the talking. So it's good to kind of mm. have um, have my own voice out there, and I appreciate uh, you being willing to give up your time so that I can share with people. Absolutely, I'm glad to help. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, guess we'll. Talk again soon. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Did you? You were kind of trying to wrap things up, right? I mean, yeah, but I didn't really know what to say, and because I was, okay, but you were I, out of questions. Um, I mean, we can come up with. I can ask more from the list if you want. Me no, to no, no. I just wasn't sure if like, you were you out of questions or not. Yeah. I feel like okay. there were parts of that that were gold, but parts of that were also crap. Yeah, but it was my fault, not editing. yours. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna and I hope, I'm hoping that there's not like an, too bad of an echo or any other like bad connection because it doesn't sound perfectly clear. So, oh, me or you? You sound a little I, I don't know. on. It yeah, could be me. But, it could be. I'm not even sure, but whatever. Uh, if, yeah, if I thought it sounded, it's not good. We can redo it. Sounded, it. Yeah, I thought it sounded weird the last time, and then you sounded really clear on the actual recording. So that was good. Oh, good. But yeah, okay, lesson learned. Don't push through it. Next time I'm going to take a nap and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you just start babbling. Yeah, you know, marketing's great. No. Marketing is the most exciting thing in the world. <sighs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Actually, a lot of the feedback that I just gave my students was like, for the final presentation, you need to, like, infuse some enthusiasm. Like, remember mm-hmm. I told you about the one-person comment where she was like, what's the point? So, oh, yeah. So her, her group was to create a Facebook ad for my, um, for my for Natural Touch Chiropractic, my She's a doctor of chiropractic, and then she also practices Chinese medicine, so acupuncture, cupping, gua sha. Wow. So she's giving the presentation, the same girl that said, what's the point of a creative brief? So she's giving uh, her, or what's the point of all that work, or whatever, however she yeah. worded it. Do you remember what it was? It was something yeah. like, why do so much work? Why work hard? Mm. Gee, I don't know, lady. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it was like, so she's giving her presentation and she's just like, yeah, I don't know, because I guess like chiropractic, you're just like all Zen and stuff. And it was, oh my God. <laughs> I said something like, I said, watch when you use language with clients, you know, especially when you're speaking to the client, like sort of, mm. kind of, and all Zen and stuff, because it sounds <laughs> very like, like, I said it sounds very condescending. Yeah, like yep. you have so much contempt for for Zen, and mm-hmm. and that's really not what chiro- chiropractic is. Not Zen, okay? I think you know acupuncture. You're getting stuck with needles, although it many people do fall asleep during acupuncture treatments. Like it kind of hurts from <laughs> sometimes. Well, yeah, um, I mean, I've never done it, but I imagine. Moves. Yeah, cupping and um, gua sha. Gua sha is like this hard stone, and you scrape the crap out of your skin, and it leaves huge red marks. Cupping leaves huge red marks. So while it is very, like, 
natural and holistic. I don't think it's zen. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's just, you know, the way she said it, I was just like, oh, you are not winning points with me, honey child. It's like, <laughs> You know, I mean, to sit there and be like, what's the point of all that work? I think that's what she said. What's the point of all that work? Because if you want to be successful at anything, it requires hard work. (laughs) But, yeah. So when you asked that question about, like, getting into their minds, I was like, oh, yeah. (laughs) You were thinking about her. Privilege. Entitlement, all that nonsense. Oh, yeah. Lazy. Oh, to the max. I have a kid who has got mm. like four missing assignments. I had to report him as a failing student. Um, mm. The week that the week that I, so I did that like on, we meet on Thursdays. I think I reported that I had to report it by like that Monday. And so he was mm. failing. I mean, th- I couldn't even, you know, give him points if I wanted to, because I can't just give you points if you just don't do the assignment. Right. And, mm. um, and then that week he didn't even show up to class. So that's how much that phased him, that I had to reach out to his advisor and say that he's failing and go through this whole long process and fill out all these freaking forms because he doesn't want to do the work. And, mm. yeah, and then he doesn't even show up to class that week. It's like, yeah, you, mm. you really don't care. And every week he's late to class. And, like, mm. it's just, yeah, it's like why you realize that, you, you know, you're wasting that money. That right. in itself, like, I didn't pay for my undergrad, and if I thought I was going to fail a class, which to me, like, a B was failing, I was like, mm. I was beside myself because that's such a waste of money, but it wasn't even my money, but, like, I have a right. respect for money and my parents, and, mm. yeah, mm. This, these kids, that's why I said, like, there's a, there's a very law, there's a very big difference. You get students like that, and then you get students like, um, and the group who rebranded me, they're super bright, mm. super hardworking. Obviously, my assistant, I wouldn't have hired her to do my, mm. you know, my marketing and stuff if she wasn't hardworking. She, she was yeah. a former student of mine. So, yeah. But they're, but I also think it's because it's art, too. Like, art majors mm. are usually, usually the ones that are um, really strong students do come from the business side of the business programs and the marketing degrees. They're usually a little, yeah. Mm. Oh, anyway. Right. Anywho, um, I didn't get a single website hit from my direct mail piece, and I oh. boosted, I, I ran a Facebook ad to that same zip code mm. that my mail piece went out. I've been running that all week. Nothing. A girl I know oh. shared it. And I'll have to look at the stats and see if it's got – it probably has – she probably has more likes on the shared post because it's her and she has a big following, <laughs> you know what I mean, mm-hmm. than I have mm-hmm. on the actual ad. So I'll have to look at it. But, yeah, that's going, going back to my point about B2B being harder. Like, you know, I send mm-hmm. out a postcard for my real estate clients. Boom, it works like magic. I send it out for myself. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Run a Facebook ad for mm-hmm. my clients. Boom, works like magic. Run it for myself. <laughs> Nothing. No. Oh, yeah. Frustrating. Yeah. And that's so why, again, like I'm not surprised the SEO thing didn't work because I just don't think business owners have the time to sit down in front of a computer and look for somebody like me. You know, I think yeah. it literally it comes up in conversation with somebody else and I have to be referred. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I mean, again, I was going to make a comment in the show about how a lot of the clients you have are, your friends or friends of friends and right. you know, part of the part of the pricing thing is, you know, yeah, related to that too. You know, you want to give them a deal because, you know, right. they're family or something, you know. Right. Or well, and I can't, whatever. it's funny because there's so many times when I've wanted to out a client and it's always the same damn client. It's my real estate client because they want to take, uh-huh. they, they like, okay, I'm sorry, but when you, you sell one house and basically, well, no, probably two or three houses and basically my salary for the year is paid for. And, you know, mm-hmm. she's selling two, three houses a week. So, oh. so, you know, and it's like in one, you know, they'll in one breath, they'll be like, oh, we really want to hire you to the marketing for this other company that we have because her husband is always getting into new shit. 
but I don't know. Mm-hmm. We just can't afford it right now. By the way, did I tell you we're going to Disneyland next week? Right. <laughs> Shit like that yeah. that you have to listen to. It's like, uh, oh. yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they're always trying to, like, she called me the other day. She And she has cock-blocked me from so many clients. She does the opposite. Oh, no. She's like, well, I don't know. She's pretty expensive. And it's like, what oh, are my you doing God. telling people that, you know what I mean? Her whole... Um, the whole entire agency, so they work for Caldwell Banker, and their broker is this guy, Brenizer. Well, Brenizer was like, who does your marketing? It always looks good. And she's like, yeah, I don't really know if she has the time. And then she calls to tell me that she says these things. And I'm like, and I've said oh. repeatedly, repeatedly I'm like I don't mind helping out I'm more than happy to help out just tell people to contact me I'm like I gave you my business card you know um freaking use them but Mm. um but yeah so so they I have no problem giving people a discount them I they're grandfathered in at like a thousand bucks a month you know and that's a pretty mm. hard pill to swallow just because with real estate, too, I have to pretty much drop everything I'm doing. Houses sell so fast that I need mm. to get it up on Facebook and I need to get it out there. So I have to, like, drop everything I'm doing to get to her stuff, which is also annoying. Mm. But she called me the other day and she's like, are you taking – or no, she, she texted me. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, why? She's like, I called you this morning. You didn't answer and you never called me <sighs> back. And I was like, oh, I totally missed that call. See, that's like how responsive I am. People think I'm dead mm. if I miss a call. Right? You told that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, sorry about that. And she's like, that's okay. I'll call you tomorrow. Doesn't call me tomorrow. I think she ended mm. that was a Friday. I think she ended up calling me on a Monday. She's like, oh, mm. well, the reason I called was because – one of my clients that I sold a house to has a window washing, I think it was, or a power washing business, and they were asking about who does my marketing, but I didn't want to oh. give out your, your information without oh asking my God. first. I know, <sighs> I know. It's like, it's not for you to decide. Give out my fucking information and let me right. decide. You know what I mean? Like, if I don't yeah. want to take them on, I think she thinks she's, like, scoping them out for me or something. Right. Like, she doesn't want what... to take your time away that you owe her. Right. <laughs> for some right. Other point. Right. Right. Oh, so God. I can see why she wouldn't want to share me with the other agents in the office. Right. But I, I could kind of see that. But she's done it several mm. times. It's not even the same that have asked. Not, well, no, in her office, yeah. But this, no. Oh. So anyway, so I was, and the thing that bothered me about this is like, well, when was that original conversation had with them? And now you're calling me at least four days later. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, yes, send them my way. How long is it going right. to take you to contact? Like, it's all, yeah, it's all out of my control now and out of my mm-hmm. hands. Right. Because I have to rely on her. So, yeah. And in that same conversation, she was bringing up about like, so the most recent thing that they developed is called the Gator Grabber. And it's a, she thinks that it can go global. And this is how small town she is, but she doesn't realize that people who live in cities don't have bonfires on their fucking porches, okay? <laughs> they, don't need, they don't need gator grabbers that reach into fire and take fire log mm-hmm. sticks and turn them over. So that's what it does. Right. It's basically like a okay. poker, <laughs> but it's right. got like an actual, you know, mouth that opens yeah. up. One of the first things I told them when they approached me about it, I was like, well, do some trademark research on that because I bet you there's some, and there are other products. Yeah, Yeah. well, and there are other products with that name, but they're not necessarily, yeah. Um, So they didn't do that. Right, you've got got Um, the name and you've got the use because, you know, I'm sure there's tons of other products that reach for stuff for you. Her husband... Her husband bought into a metal fabrication company, and so he wanted to just put the Gator Grabber logo on this beautiful website that I made them, (laughs) and he just wanted to plop it on there. And it was just insulting to the fact that, like, I was like, oh, you already have a logo? Like, you know I do logos. I did your logo. Yes, and they didn't even talk to me. And so that was frustrating. And then, of course, what's the logo? It's a JPEG with a white background. And, like, Mm, I can't just plop this on your website. Right? I'm like, I can't just plop this on your website. It's like bubble letters. It's like, you know, very, like, 
it's just not professional looking at all. I said, it's, mm-hmm. I said ab- the, they thought they could just put the logo on the homepage of their metal fabrication company website and have it link to a Shopify page where people could buy it. I'm like, you know how mm-hmm. like out in left field this is? I'm like, so then what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to advertise the gator grabber, but then send people to a URL that says, um, you know, the company.net, because that's the other thing. The metal fabrication, the name of the metal fabrication company is the company. Yeah, that doesn't show you anything about it. <laughs> no, it's so bad. Oh, and I did that logo too. And that logo, look, it looks really great. It doesn't tell you shit, like you said, but from mm-hmm. the name of it. But, yeah, so anyways, so I, I was, you know, giving them all my great advice, and I quoted them, I think, like, 600 freaking bucks, maybe 800 to, to set up the Shopify website. Um, oh, they couldn't, they didn't want to pay it. So he set it up. It looks like shit. Look, I mean, it's so bad. It's so bad. Well, one of the guys um, in Chippewa, he owns an Ace Hardware, and he was going to yeah. try and get the, the Gator Grad. They had been selling them at Ace Hardware at the local store, and he was going to try and help them get into all the Ace Hardwares around the country. And I said, uh-huh. well, don't you think the first thing you should do is make your website look a little more professional so that when the bigwigs mm-hmm. who just dis- make these decisions at Ace Hardware go to your website, they're like, they see you as a legitimate operation. Mm-hmm. I told them, I'm like, you can't, you, I'm like, you can't promote this with pictures you took of the product from your fucking iPhone. They look mm-hmm. like shit. And they had a couple of them like sitting up and I looked at some of the comments on the post and people were like, what am I looking at? Nobody fucking knew what it was, right? So I'm like, you need video, you need images. I mean, if you think that this can be this global thing, that's what she says. She thinks it can be a global thing. (laughs) I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Let's sell these to starving children in Africa. They really need a gator grabber. But, yeah, so the whole, the the whole, that, those are the type of clients where I'm like, oh, my God, you only pay me $1,000 a month. You constantly call. That, that conversation was worth $1,000. Mm-hmm. All the, mm-hmm. you know, the, <laughs> the advice I just gave you on what to do that you completely ignored, that's mm-hmm. worth $1,000. <laughs> yeah. So, well, they did you a yeah. favor by not making you do all that shit because well, whatever right, you, because it would have taken you tons of time and you wouldn't have charged them enough and, they right. have appreciated it, so it's probably better that you didn't yeah. get involved. Or they which would have screwed up she somehow called and me, you didn't put your name on it anyway. Right, which is why when she called me to claim that, I, you know, that she had a cus- like a client for me maybe, but mm-hmm. also the whole end of the conversation was, so yeah, about the gator grabber, and Mike was saying again mm-hmm. how we really should just pay you to do our marketing, and I kind of I laid it out like that. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. I can't drive – website without I can't drive traffic to your website without decent social media pictures and I can't make sales on your website without a decent website you know mm-hmm. I'm like you need to fix those things and if you're not going to yeah. like I said if you're not going to pay me to do it then ha- hire somebody to do it but you won't find yeah. anybody who will do it in a price that you're <laughs> you, you know. know or they'll do or it in really crappy right just like the logo this, this mm-hmm. guy who does the logos does um he does, he paints, so the, one of the things Javi that her husband does is he races dirt cars, dirt track car uh-huh. racing, and okay. yeah, total hillbilly thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. So he races dirt track cars, and this guy paints the cars, like he paints the people who sponsor the car, that's his okay. job. So yeah, so he's super qualified to create a logo. <laughs> it's like the guy probably, you know doesn't have any marketing sense or any sense of like target markets, you know what I mean? And who you're reaching out to. You know how to use a brush. Yeah. You know how to use a computer program, probably Photoshop, Mm. but, (laughs) or InDesign or something, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. So anywho, so much we could talk about. Okay. Well, I'll listen through this and I'll see what we can okay. salvage. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for your time. Of course. All right. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye.